with 13, 2021, it is 6.01 p.m. Madam Clerk. Commissioner McCoy. Here. Commissioner Botel. Here. Commissioner Lofton. Co-Chair Miller Anderson. Here. Chair Lanier. Here. We also have Jonathan Evans, CRA Executive Director. Chris Smith, the General Counsel for CRA, and Shirley Desir, CRA Clerk. Thank you. We will have a moment of silence led by the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner McCoy. Are there any additions, deletions, or substitutions for the agenda this evening? None from staff, Madam Chair. Are there any disclosures of any of these items that are listed on the agenda by commission or by staff? Can I get a motion to adopt the agenda? Move to adopt the agenda. Second. Madam Clerk. Commissioner McCoy? Yes. Commissioner Botel? Yes. Co-Chair Miller Anderson? Yes. Chair Lanier? Yes. Motion carried. We are at the consent agenda. All matters listed under this item are considered to be routine and action will be taken by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council person so requests in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Mr. Evans? I'm sorry, I was going to have you to present it. <laughs> um, anyone want to remove any of these items off this agenda? I mean, off of this consent agenda? Can I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Madam Clerk. Commissioner McCoy? Yes. Commissioner Botel? Yes. Co Chair Miller Anderson? Yes. Chair Lanier? Yes. Motion carried. We are at the next item on our agenda, which is the presentations. Uh, number two, Mr. Evans. Madam Chair and members of the board, if I can have Ms. Kristen Hicks uh, from the CRA and Mr. Scott Evans make this presentation. I mean, Nita Jenkins, I'm sorry. Food truck pilot update. The, the acceptance of public comment cards are now closed. Good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners, and it's a pleasure to speak in front of you guys this evening. My name's Kristen Hicks, and I'm here to give you an update on the pilot program for a Thursday Taste of Riviera Beach Food Truck Series. Today, we're going to update you on the process, the approval, and the kickoff of the Thursday Taste of Riviera Beach Series pilot program. We'll go through the outreach, marketing of the series, food truck interest meeting, and how the conversations happened there, how the vendors were selected, and the recap of the last event we had on September the 16th. We'll want to review a little bit about what the pilot program consists of. So what happened was at the board meeting on August the 26th, you guys voted four to one in approval for, to move forward with the pilot series. The program consists of three dates. The first one was September the 16th. The next one is October the 21st and then November 18th at the Spanish Courts in Riviera Beach Marina. The marketing for the program is as follows. The series was marketed on both the CRA and city websites, social media. It was also marketed on TV 18. Eventbrite events were created and newsletters from the CRA in the city went out to all residents that had signed up for the newsletters. Flyers for the September 9th interest meeting and the food trucks events were posted on the CRA and city websites. Facebook and LinkedIn events were created and press releases to the local media went out. Flyers were posted on multiple Facebook groups and printed flyers were left at multiple city buildings. Events were put on the calendars for additional different websites as Discover the Palm Beaches, North Chamber Commerce, Munchkin Fun, and various others. 
The interest meeting went where we went, we had them come to the event center and that was on September 9th at 4 p.m. We reached out before that to development services to get their list of trucks that they already have and emailed them the flyer. And then we also reached out to anyone that had their interest at the city council meeting to make sure that they got the information. We distributed the interest flyer on all of our social media platforms that you saw previously. Trucks were emailed about their interest and we asked them before the meeting on September 9th to provide their business tax receipt and their liability insurance to us. When we had the meeting, we gave them a packet of information of all the details we needed, including our sign-in sheet. And we had 11 trucks attend this meeting. And any trucks that had their interest that were unable to attend and had emailed us, we emailed the packet the next day to them. Development services and finance helped us fast track the business tax license process for the first event and did a phenomenal job. So the selection process, this is how we selected the trucks. So it was based on the packets receiving back their sign-up sheet, their business tax receipt, or if they had submitted for fast tracking for the event to our finance liability insurance, and a mixture of the food for variety at the actual event. The number of trucks were placed based on the attendance. So for our first event, we had four. So we wanted to give a brief recap of what happened at the event itself. So on, on September the 17th, we had Taste of Riviera Beach food truck event, and that night, was a really bad rainstorm. <laughs> so thankfully, we still had people come out and they came out underneath their umbrellas and they enjoyed the event. We had an attendance of about 50 people that came out and food trucks were still able to make some form of a profit during it. We had media coverage on Channel 5 News, Channel 10 and Channel 25. And these stations even came out in the rain to do interviews on site. Uh, we had placement in multiple newsletters, also through press on, on television. And it was also listed in the Miami events, uh, festivals and newsletter. So the event is set for an environment of fun, good food and entertainment. And so we had a 10 piece band we had a 10 piece band called N2 Nation who were unable to perform due to the rain. They had actually set up, did all of their preset, and unfortunately, once the event started, the rain started. Um, we had four food trucks. We had giant games for kids to play, Uno's, chess, checkers, and Jenga, at picnic tables for people to sit at, Bistro lighting to create a relaxed ambiance and free parking there. The Riviera Beach police were out there to help direct traffic and also help people park. And they even were so wonderful and had umbrellas to take people to the food trucks. And some of the trucks um, were, stayed through the entire event. We only had one leave before the end. So for our future event, in October, on October 21st, we'll be featuring a jazz guitarist for the entertainment. Each event will have the giant games for kids to play, picnic tables for people to eat, the bistro lighting, the free parking, and five to seven food trucks. And for our November event, we are planning for a local DJ for entertainment. And we have already reached out to multiple media entities such as paper, television, and radio with our press release so that we can hopefully have them come out again to the event and hopefully not have weather this time. So with all of that said, um, we want to invite everybody to come out to the event on Thursday, October the 21st, which is next Thursday from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Spanish Courts at Marina Village. And we're here to take any questions you guys have. 
Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Hicks. Um, I was the one person that didn't support it because you guys didn't have a budget. I would hope that we've gotten a budget, and if so, can you give us some of those numbers? For the permanent structure, correct? For no, the, just for the event altogether. For the temporary event? Yeah, I mean, we had a ban. I mean, obviously there's police coverage. I mean, I think I want to kind of understand exactly what was spent out and what should we expect that's sure. going to be. So uh, our uh, total budget for all three events is $8,000 total. Inclusive of the ban and police? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, I guess going forward, do we have any measurables as to perhaps not dollars, but how many attendees supported each individual business? Yes. So um, <coughs> unfortunately, due to the rain last time, we were only able to survey two people. Um, but our goal is when we're there to be able to count and measure by having a six question survey for the public to uh, to write down their information so that we can get their feedback for any type of future events if we if you guys agree and proceed to go to the next level with this. Okay. Lastly, I, I guess I was speaking in terms of the actual food trucks. If they had 40 customers, that's 40 more than they would have had. So at least going forward, is that something that we can look at perhaps keeping track of so that way we can know that, you know, we've served, you know, on this Thursday night 200 people, which we would have not normally, you know, had that, I guess, impression or, or contact with? Definitely. So we are going to definitely survey them and we'll get the numbers to you guys also. And the reason is when you eat food, I don't know how genuine folks are going to be with doing a survey. Maybe they're too full or maybe they're not even interested. So at least from those vendors that are benefiting, we can kind of know how many, you know, families or customers that they've touched. We will, definitely. Thanks. Are there any other questions in regards to this item? Are there any plans to um, expand the number of food trucks? For, for the pilot series or for later on? Either one. Um, so right now we're looking at having five to seven for this next event. Depending on the attendance, that's where we can go even larger depending on if we need more trucks. Very good, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next item on the agenda is number three. <clears throat> Resolution authorizing the approval of commercial grant, grant incentive program for round four, totaling $236,087 to assist local businesses to complete external improvements to businesses located in the community redevelopment agent area. The acceptance of public comment cards are now closed. So moved. Second. Mr. Evans. Madam Chair, members of the board, if I can have the Director of Planning and Development Services, Mr. Scott Evans, make this presentation. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, this item is to complete uh, property improvements for our local businesses uh, that are in the community redevelopment area. And on November 12th of last year, the CRA board updated the scoring criteria for this program and approved the new application process going forward. And this allowed all of the uh, existing businesses who are located in the CRA to apply uh, for the, that current round of funding uh, to make improvements to their, their properties and their building. The, in that current round, the, the applications we received uh, eight for our property improvement incentive program. And this program provides $40,000, up to $40,000, uh, to any uh, local business owner who wants to invest that in their project. And it requires a match, so it's a four to one match. So for every dollar that the local business owner puts into the uh, improvement, the CRA matches that at a four to one ratio, up to a maximum of 40,000. And this pro program has resulted in uh, various improvements that have happened previously uh, during our previous rounds. Um, this is, I'm uh, going to show a few of the before and afters of some of the success of this project. And this is the integrate, integrated care at, located at 31st Street, I mean, sorry, 31 West 20th Street. And this was the before picture, and they did some signage package. They painted the building, added some aluminum fencing, 
and you can see uh, the after, uh, after those minor improvements. This particular one cost about 32,000 total. Um, this is the Get Wet business, and they're located on 237 East Blue Heron, which is the south side of Blue Heron, uh, just west of the Blue Heron Bridge. And they installed all new metal roofing, some landscaping improvements, and paint. And this is the before picture. And this project turned out very nice. You can see the after picture. <coughs> the new roofing uh, made a significant aesthetic improvement to the building. Madam Chair? <coughs> yes, go ahead. Did we require them to use a particular color scheme or anything, or we just let them do what they wanted to do? Uh, the, for each application, before they are permitted to proceed, they have to apply for their building permits. And at that time, the CRA reviews what they're proposing to do. And then we give them authorization to proceed. So we don't direct the type of colors that they use, but we review them before they proceed. Thank you. Uh, this was the boat owner's warehouse, which was located on the east side of Broadway. And they made uh, some major upgrades to their property, from signage to the entire exterior of the building. And this resulted in, a, in a quite a, a significant improvement of the way the building looks along Broadway. Uh, it had been many years before it had received any improvements. And this project cost uh, $131,352, uh, and the CRA provided a $40,000 grant for it. And the last one that was approved uh, by the CRA board was to provide $40,000 for the complete building and site renovation for the Bush Canvas Shop. And this is the before picture is seen above and the after picture is below. And that project took a very small, uh, older commercial building and made significant expansion and renovations uh, to the project. Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. Just wanted to say, I stopped in to visit them the other day and they've done a fantastic job with that space. And they're looking to hire, in case anybody's interested in being trained in the canvas making business, <clears throat> not making, but <clears throat> utilizing for upholstery. And it's women-owned business. They've been in business since 1965, and they're happy with their new location, so thank you. Madam Chair? Yes, go ahead. What was the total of their project? Do you know? Uh, I don't have the total because it was such a large project. When they applied, uh, they only applied for, I think, an approximately $80,000 because it was just a component. Um, so I didn't provide that number because I'm not sure the entire cost of the project, but it was well into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. So can you clarify, they applied for 80? Uh, yes, originally in the round, um, they applied for a series of, I think it was landscaping and exterior improvements that were just part of their overall project. Uh, so we only had the, the data on just that one aspect that they wanted to add to their project. Uh, but we didn't have the total data on the whole um, site renovation and expansion. But it was, our investment um, was a very small component of that total overall improvement. All the grant applications in this round were reviewed and scored uh, by myself, uh, Andre Lewis, planning and uh, Andre Lewis, our project, former project manager, and uh, uh, Scott Evans, planning and development director, and our director of neighborhood services, Anita Jenkins. The board selected Commissioner Douglas Lawson uh, to assist us with this program, and Mr. Lawson participated in the review of the submitted applications. Uh, applications were scored based on the underwriting criteria that the board, this board approved uh, back in November. And the purpose of the scoring is uh, it was implemented in order, one, to, to make sure that a project meets the minimum criteria um, for funding. But the, the primary reason was in previous rounds, we received more applications than the funding that was available. So we implemented the scoring criteria in order to provide the board a ranking of the projects. Uh, in case there were more projects submitted than the available funds that we had. The total request for this round uh, did not exceed our available funding. Uh, so this, we are, CRA staff is recommending that all the grant requests are approved. We got, received eight applications um, for a total of $236,087. And applications uh, were received from a Atkins Daycare, uh, which is uh, located on 10th Street, just east of Australian Avenue. And their request is for improvements to their playground surfacing, ADA accessibility improvements to the exterior, painting, exterior lighting, 
uh, and to replace some of their exterior doors. The Greater Gator uh, has applied for 40,000 also. And they're looking at also doing ADA accessibility, uh, installing hurricane impact doors and windows, and doing some exterior painting and improvements to their property. The Crown Square Plaza, which is located on the northwest corner of 10th Street and Barack Obama Highway, have requested $40,000 also, and they're looking at doing a variety of improvements from solar panel installation, hurricane shutters, irrigation, signage, and uh, exterior painting and enhancements. Uh, there's a small commercial building on the east side of Broadway, just north of 28th Street, who is requesting to make a stucco repair and replacement, uh, some painting, parking lot uh, improvements, and to do some external uh, power and electrical uh, needed for their site. And that's from Gem Keen Realty at 2826 Broadway. They have requested uh, $29,841. The VGO Coin Laundry, uh, which is located right at the base of the Blue Heron Bridge, and they're looking uh, for a grant of $32,000, and they're looking to make uh, major changes to the exterior of their building. So they're looking at exterior painting, installing an awning, doing some landscaping, enhancing their parking lot, and adding uh, security, exterior lighting, and fixing, uh, replacing, rather, their sign. And Seashell City uh, has requested a grant of $27,000, and their property, this would be used to repaint all of the exterior, install a new mural. Um, when that, uh, a new building was built adjacent to it and expanded, and their mural uh, that they had installed became damaged as a result because it was only partial, and they repainted it, sort of, uh, but so that would add a new mural at the same time as repainting the building. And they would also make improvements to their parking lot um, and make ADA improvements for access to their business. Eastern Boat Works has requested uh, $17,000, and this would be for exterior fencing. Eastern Boat Works is located on Avenue C across from Marina Village. And they're looking to install uh, security fen and fencing on their property. And they're looking at installing the decorative aluminum type fencing uh, which would enhance the appeal of the project. And the last grant we re request we received was for $8,532 from Guacamole's Restaurant, and they're located at 1281 Plaza Circle. And they're looking at doing a new very large awning uh, that would enhance the look of their, uh, their building and their buildings right across the street from the gas station, right beside um, the Greater Gator uh, on the south side of uh, just south of, of Blue Heron, rather. As a component of the requested grants, um, we do a series of things to ensure that the applicants uh, maintain compliance and in, in complete the projects accordingly. They have to uh, apply for and receive building permits uh, for all of their improvements and they cannot apply for reimbursement until they get um, approvals for, on inspections from the, for those uh, improvements uh, that go through the building department. Each uh, applicant is required to sign a grant agreement. This ensures that the improvements um, are completed in one year and that they're maintained for a period of 60 months. And additionally, we require a promissory note, and this document uh, holds the grantee or business owner liable if the terms of the agreement are broken and the agency must seek legal remedy. And prior to the execution of the individual grant agreements, the CRA will hire an independent contractor uh, to review the scope of work and confirm that the proposed cost is consistent with the planned improvements. And we implemented this during the last round, uh, and that worked very well once the applicants had uh, put all of their application together for the building department to make their submittal, we were then able to review those plans and have a third a party contractor look at them to ensure uh, that the dollars that are invested on behalf of the CRA are being appropriately spent and that the costs for the project are uh, equal to uh, what the market is at the time. M Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. So speak to that a little further, Ms. Evans. You said you had a third party. Is that, um, who's that party and is that also included in the budget going forward? Because I see there's a, 
Uh, yes, we have uh, professional services funds that we use for that. Um, those costs range between $500 and $1,000 per project. Uh, and uh, we get three bids from local contractors um, to do the, the, uh, the work. And um, I think only in one case uh, we did find that the, the costs we weren't exactly what we felt was fair. So we took the bid from the third party contractor and offered that as the grant. Um, but that one did not proceed. And so we would propose to do that for all of these applicants before they receive their building permit and permission to proceed uh, for the grant related uh, improvements. Mr. Evans, let me ask you, you said it's anywhere from 500 to $1,000 per project. Are we speaking of per applicant or for per round? It's per applicant, depending on the scope of their project. Um, so a lot of these projects cost between 50 and $100,000. And so we need a contractor to look over all of the items, uh, understand them, and then prepare a bid and a pricing for it. And obviously, that's um, professional work done by those contractors, not for the purposes of getting the work, but for ensuring that we have um, a fair price. And, and lastly, is it one person, or do we have a pool of third-party contractors that do the estimation service? Uh, for e all of the projects, we, we submit it to the pool of contractors. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, staff recommends approval of the eight commercial grant uh, um, applications. Uh, the fiscal budget, which was approved, uh, included $250,000 to fund this round of commercial grants. And so the funding is available. And I'm uh, here to answer any board questions. Uh, thank you. So, Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. I, I think it's a great program and I like it. I, I see that we were about $13,900, I guess, left over. And I guess that just kind of ended up that way, that we were right under the 250000 that was budgeted for. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, and no, it was just those eight applicants? Uh, yes, this is all the applicants that we received. Okay, well, that's good. I, I guess I would just, I don't know how this works, but going forward, if there's dollars left over, instead of going into professional services, it would really make sense that if we're going to have an estimator review these plans, it should likely come out of this budget as well. That's just, I think, not a bad idea going forward because and, and I guess here's a better question. What does it mean to have a round? Because the 2020 resolution shows that that was round four as well. Are these not done by each fiscal year? They're done by fiscal year. Um, the projects take quite a bit of time from the time that we offer the opportunity for them to apply. Then they put their applications together. Then they submit them with the bids from the contractors, which is the most lengthy part. Um, and then they're evaluated and finally approved by this board. So the approved budget has uh, new dollars for a new round that we, uh, we, were, we would hope to bring back to the board um, in, the, in the next CRA board meeting. And the approved budget also included uh, the, the funding from the, uh, from the previous round uh, since that, that, was, that opportunity was made available to the business owners and we were processing their applications. So this year's budget included both the funds rolled over from the previous uh, year and funds to issue a new round. Um, and per our discussions in November of last year, uh, we are no longer holding uh, applicants who exceed the one year that they have to proceed with the project. Any applicant who has not initiated um, to move forward, those grants have been um, rescinded. Uh, they were already canceled since the grant agreement was not completed. Because uh, previous, in previous years, we had uh, grants that we were holding open in case the business owner moved forward. And during our discussions um, in November and previously, the board had indicated uh, that they wanted to make sure that those funds um, were utilized. So uh, we are holding um, funds for this round, uh, but there is no, uh, no other round um, that we're holding funds for for projects that did not begin. Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. So are we sure in those situations, Mr. Evans, that these are... I guess businesses that are holding over for some reason of their own and not some delay in, in the permitting department, correct? Yes, we reach out to these applicants. A lot, of, Most of the ones that didn't proceed didn't even complete a grant agreement. So they got the grant but then decided not to uh, sign an agreement and move forward with the project. Okay, so what did we, if you know or recall, 
And if you don't, it's fine. What do you remember that we rolled over from last year um, as far as funds? Um, yeah, well, the entire amount for this round was what we rolled over, uh, plus one grant is a, um, for, it's a, I forget the name of it, but there's a church located just off of Avenue E, um, and they were in the permitting and process and trying to get for, uh, information from the contractor, and they had started work, uh, so they were part way through, so that's the only one that was underway that uh, wasn't completely reimbursed uh, in the previous year. Okay, thank you. Any other questions in regards to this item? Madam Clerk. Commissioner McCoy. Yes. Commissioner Botel. Yes. Co-Chair Miller Anderson. Yes. Commission uh, Chair Lanier. Yes. Motion carried. Madam Clerk, next item. Small business incubator program. Mr. The Evans. Acceptance of public comment cards are now closed. Madam Chair, members of the board, if I can have the Director of Neighborhood Services, Ms. Anita Jenkins, make this presentation. Good evening, Madam Chair, uh, Madam Pro Tem, and Commissioners. I am here to go through a proposed program that we've mentioned during our budget season and um, it's here for you all to hopefully provide some comment and feedback and at a subsequent meeting we'd like to bring the full program to you to um, approve hopefully. Uh, before you is the small business incubator program. We know that small businesses are the backbone of our local economy. And as we embark upon expanded and new economic development opportunities here in the city of Riviera Beach, we need to ensure that we have excellent small business support for our various um, businesses, entrepreneurs, et cetera, by offering incentives similar to what you've just heard, capacity building, training, and removal of barriers for growth. What um, you have included in your packet is a description of staff's work and taking into account uh, comments and suggestions from this board uh, over the last few months. We're proposing that we have a program that will um, be offered to businesses interested in uh, participating within the CRA, locating in the CRA for pop-up opportunities, et cetera. The types of business uses or types of businesses that would be eligible would be restaurants, bakeries, insurance offices, gourmet food markets, and there is a list that's included in the packet including uh, marketing offices, accounting, uh, small boutiques, real estate offices, hair and nail salons, takeout restaurants, florists, and medical offices. Similar to other programs that uh, we presented over the last few years. Ineligible businesses that we would uh, proffer would be things like businesses that sell far firearms or a shooting range, uh, religious affiliated retail stores, adult gaming arcades, liquor stores and bars, adult entertainment, vapor cigarette, <coughs> cigarette stores, convenience stores, discount stores, churches and places of worship, alcohol or drug rehab centers or housing for same, home-based businesses would be ineligible. And any other use that the CRA staff or board determines will not support the redevelopment of the area. The program, as I said, would be open for emerging or entrepreneurial uh, participants for up to three years of support. 
The submitter must ensure that the proposed enterprise complies with all city ordinances that apply um, within the CRA district. And that will pertain to property location, the square footage of the building, et cetera. The proposer should provide a comprehensive business plan during the process that clearly explains the vision of the business, a complete SWOT analysis, which is strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and how the business venture would be successful in the aforementioned mission location. Financial verification. The proposal will be prepared to furnish documentation so that the business financials can be verified. And as part of the program, the successful applicant will be required to participate and successfully complete our business readiness certification program and training through the CRA or similar types of programs that are offered within one year of application. And uh, there would be, depending upon the um, type of opportunity that we're moving forward with, it would either be through an RFP process or a, a mini application process. Uh, for instance, we heard a presentation on food trucks. We might very well want to incentivize uh, expansion of our food truck program and offer some small business support. Um, we would want to encourage some of our businesses operating in the tiki market perhaps to expand into a brick and mortar type of location. Um, we've, um, we know that we're gonna have several live work lofts that we hope to attract some small businesses on our Broadway corridor. So those uh, emerging businesses might be eligible for this um, particular program. So I'll stop there and just um, see if there's any feedback or comments on the proposed uh, program and uh, we would take that and then bring back a complete set of guidelines and applications for you. So what's the budget for this program? The budget uh, that was set aside and I, uh, that was just approved is a total of $115,000 for this year, for this fiscal year. And um, if we're able to move ahead, um, we're proposing to bring back the item either at the November or December meeting and launch the program um, shortly after approval. Madam Chair. Yes, go So ahead. are we looking to, um, I probably have misread it or something, but I just wanna know, are we looking to provide a space as we did with the one on Broadway, the original? incubator that we did. So we're looking for, it's like the Miami subs, for example. We might very well provide space. Uh -huh. There may be uh, an emerging business that where they have their own space and they're looking for some help with build out or marketing okay. or um, equipment, et cetera. So it would depend upon the- um, Case by case. The, by, on a case by case yeah. basis. How's the one on Broadway doing? Doing very well Good. from all of the marketing, outreach, and the feedback that we've received, the business Great. is doing very well. We're very proud of it. And how long did we, how long is that pilot extending? I mean, how? Three years. Three years, okay. Yes. So she's been in there, what, a year and a half? Not quite. Um, Not quite. January 2022 20, will be one year. Okay, thank you. I wanna also mention that uh, we looked around and had some preliminary conversations with potential partners and I listed them in the write-up where we'd be looking to work with the Office of Equal Business Opportunity with the county, the Black Business Investment Corporation, the Black Chamber of Commerce, the Florida Hisp Hispanic American Chamber of Commerce, Community Partners of South Florida, Florida State Minority Supplier Development Council, the National Development Council with their small business arm, uh, various small business lenders, profit and not-for-profit, and various CDFIs in our area. So if there's any feedback or reaction or input. All right, very good. Go Are they, yes, go ahead, sir. Um, I think it's great, I, you know, I was really looking, I think this captures all, especially, I can't tell you how many times folks 
ask the question of is the city or the CRA doing anything to help small or starting businesses? And, you know, I think this is a great program. Um, I, I just want to, I guess, ask the question. It says the business can be in operation, can only be in operation for less than three years. And I guess my only thinking in that is it, it's a great program to be an incubator, and that's just, just what it is, is an incubator. But, you know, I hope there's a lot of thought process into this because you want two years of tax returns, but I don't want someone coming in here with just an idea that don't have a real viable plan for it. Um, so obviously, you know, that first year is going to be, I imagine, probably one of the most difficult or challenging ones. But I just don't want anyone to have just a great idea and expect that they meet all the other criteria that they can just be able to get a free ride for three years. So I just hope that there is a little more consideration in that because, I mean, if you make it past one year, I think you're doing good. Two years, you're on your way. Um, but you may have somebody that set that three-year mark, and I don't want to close the door on them, but, you know, it's almost a, it's a delicate balancing act, but I appreciate the overall program and what you want to do. I think it's a great idea, especially given where we are. And then, obviously, if we move forward with the Blue Lagoon and we do the self-financing, I don't know what we're going to do with that. I think we're still out on that, but I think if those spaces come online, this is a good template to use in those, um, in those other two spaces if that's the direction that we choose to go. Yes. So that's just my only feedback. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions in regards to this item? No, I think it's a great program. I'm glad we're able to um, continue to expand on it. I was looking. Are you finished with your presentation? Or are you still going through I'm, some other? I'm done. Okay, so I, was, I did notice on the um, some more information about the partners where you mentioned the different chambers, Black Chamber and a few others. And if you could add the Palm Beach Chamber North on there because yes. um, Riviera Beach, I know Dr. Botella and I, and sometimes Mr. Lawson um, participate in their meetings and their committees. So they're always trying to make sure that Riviera Beach is included. So make sure that we reach out to we them will. as well. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Commissioner McCoy? Yes. Commissioner Botel? Who made a motion? We didn't make a motion. There's no, no motion. This was a um, there was no action, no, no but if you wanted oh, to okay. vote for consensus or support, that's was, fine. But oh, okay. there was no action. It was on a regular agenda, so I assume it wasn't on the presentations that it was a. You have my support. Thank you. All right, very good. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for your presentation. Mr. Evans? Um, Madam Chair, that concludes uh, the staff presentation. Um, but real briefly, uh, we did have the internal conversations related to the Blue Lagoon um, opportunity, and legal did look at the solicitation document and is of the opinion that there is not substantive enough changes that would necessitate going back out for a solicitation. That's a pure policy decision that the board would consider, but we are going to look to bring that item back for your uh, consideration at your meeting in November to get direction from the board. Um, but we do contemplate that any other agreement, if the board wanted to go back out for a solicitation for that, um, you would have to conceivably make the same type of concession and maybe even more so just based on the aggressive nature of the market and what we're seeing. So uh, legal has done some research and has provided that to staff. Um, and that ha and that concludes my comments specific to that item, Madam Chair. Very good. Uh, we will go to public comments at this time. Do we have one public comment, Ms. Mary Barron? Uh, let me read my statement. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please be reminded that the CRA Board of Commissioners has adopted rules of decorum governing public conduct during official meetings which has been posted at the front desk. In an effort to preserve order, if any of the rules are not adhered to, the commissioner chair may have any disruptive speaker or attendee removed from the podium, from the meeting, and or the building if necessary. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Public comment shall begin at 7.30 p.m. unless there is no further business of the CRA Board of Commissioners, which in that event, it shall begin. In addition, if any item is being considered at 7.30, then comments from the public shall begin immediately after the item has been concluded. Any person who would like to speak during public comment, please fill out a public comment card located at the front desk and give it to the staff before the public comment section is announced. 
Miss Mayor Brown. Good evening, board. Ms. Bram has been up ever since 8 o'clock in the morning. She has met with three community groups. And I'm going to say, Ms. Brown, she lives in the gated community. I will get with you later this week, OK? <laughs> I was also over at the port board meeting today, too. So I had to dialogue some issues and stuff with them as well. So Ms. Bram has had a very, very busy morning as well as a busy day. But I am here to, because I think that uh, last week I forgot to make mention and give the kudos out to the community because you had been calling Ms. Bram about the mosquitoes. <laughs> and this will impact our business industry as well. So let me give the general public some updates in what Ms. Bram has achieved. Thanks to the city manager, Ms. Deidre Jacob, Mr. Johnson from the Public Work Department, and Mr. Cedric, uh, Mr. Cedric. He has worked and implemented action taken with the clock mos mosquito controller. They are already uh, doing this for our city. Traps will be placed in the critical area. I made mention about in the city, it's, it's a lot of canals and stuff in the back of, you know, these residential homes. And we do know the habitation of any standing water, mosquitoes and other uh, pests will penetrate. They are using Nova Lot towers. They are doing that in a 90-day prevention. Also, as I was speaking, Mr. Sedgwick was already out in the various neighborhoods already putting down those Nava lot, lots whereas where those uh, in habitation where the mosquitoes are. They are being dropped in our canals, the C7 canal, and, and, and just to let the public know, yes, management staff are on the ball for us. So I wanted to share that with the general public last week. Also, I would like to say, Chairperson Lanier, we are glad that, you are, that your time will be completely dedicated here where you serve. We are all human beings with weaknesses and strength. And with those two, we build on those two. And that's what makes us survivors. So we are all human beings, like I said to the port board today, I am in agreement with the commercial uh, incentive incubators because they are who we are. So I, I am for that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Brown. Public comment, is that it? Is that it, for? That is all. Uh, discussion by the executive director? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Just a couple of announcements. Obviously, we heard about our food truck series. The next one is scheduled for October 21st from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. at Spanish Court. So please come out and enjoy great food, live entertainment, and fun for the family. Um, and then we have coming up December 3rd from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. and then December 4th from 6 to 8 and December 11th and December 18th, our winter wonderland at the marina. And we have a holiday lights and snow, free photos with Santa, live entertainment, train rides, a nine hole putt putt golf course, and then who said you couldn't go ice skating in South Florida? We'll actually have an ice skating uh, rink out there for uh, families to go out and participate in the activities. And then we have our Light Up Riviera Beach, our holiday decoration contest that you can win up to $200 in gift certificates for best of show for a house, a business, or boat. Please visit our website for more information on some of these events. And then last but certainly not least, um, our Santa Dash Fun Run slash Walk Saturday, December 11th. And we will be starting at the Singer Island Community Garden. And so please sign up. Registration is available. Uh, registration packups are picked up, pick up at 7.30 a.m. and the race starts at 9. So looking forward to a fun-filled holiday festivities so if you looking for more information please visit our website follow us on our social media channels and that concludes my comments madam chair uh, thank you um, discussion by general counsel 
There are no discussions, Madam Chair. Uh, we'll start with the uh, commission, Commissioner McCoy. No, ma'am. Commissioner Botel. No, thank no. you. Oh, <laughs> I think thank you. Like she's going to the whole the whole soliloquy. I thought she was going to go. Yeah, through. right. We always expect. <laughs> right. Commissioner Miller Anderson. None other than I will send an email. Um, I had an opportunity to walk with Miss Bonnie Larson. You know, she hasn't really been here to the meetings as much, but I had an opportunity to meet with her, and she wanted to walk around the areas of um, the Cash America, and. Um, smoothing me please and so I'll send an email along with some pictures of some things that she's had concerns with um, what one of the things was was the the white fence that we have going around there's a, a tree that has grown into that fence and has totally destroyed this fence um, that was one of the things but also you know just a lot of debris and trash uh, doesn't um, clean and safe go over in that area madam chair if I may Yes, go ahead. Yes, staff is supposed to be over in that area. Yes. Okay, so I'll send the, um, the, the items and some photos along with it. Let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Botel? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Evans, if it's possible to do something about the number of homeless that are now uh, living or frequenting the uh, building on the corner of Broadway and Blue Heron, it's become quite a nuisance. It, when I was over at Bush Campus the other day, they mentioned that it's, it's really getting kind of out of hand over there. I suggested several weeks ago that maybe we could, could, we could uh, reestablish the parking of an empty police car there to help uh, people be deterred from hanging out there. I don't know, but if we could have somebody just check in there, um, some of the things that are going on are not um, conducive to sanitary conditions in the neighborhood. Madam Chair, yes, please tell. Are we able to put a fence up around that area? Madam Chair, if I may. Yes, go ahead. Uh, we should have a fence up there probably in the next week or two because we're going to be moving forward with the demolition of that site. So that, that is going to be coming here in short order. Great. Thank you. Very good. I have no comments. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>